Welcome to Hannity. We have big breaking news tonight on multiple fronts. A former top prosecutor from Ukraine has now implicated, yes, sleepy, creepy, crazy Uncle Joe in what is a very serious crime. We have brand new evidence, including a signed affidavit signed under the threat of perjury, the real charge of perjury, if in fact he lied. Rudy Giuliani's comprehensive timeline coming up tonight, and it is very revealing. Also, this important news and information will prove that the media mob has been and continues to be covering for Joe Biden and his son. Also, the fraudulent Pelosi Schiff impeachment circus is getting off to a horrific start. Their first star witness just literally shot down and deflated all of the left's anti-Trump impeachment fantasies. And by the way, the cowardly Adam Schiff has been caught in yet another disgusting lie. There are now growing calls for the liar-in-chief, the cowardly Shifty Schiff, to be kicked off his committee. Also, now, buckle up. There's going to be a brand new deep state leak. This is a warning. Pretty much a minute by minute, a new non-whistleblower whistleblower every second because they think, oh, we got traction here. Let's what's uh, China, CNN, Russia. Moments ago, fake news, CNN reporting about another leak from another phone call with another world leader. This time, the president of China. The corrupt media is now trying to flood the zone with anti-Trump speculation, especially since Ukraine is blowing up in their faces and again backfiring. Now, the president said this to China, was going to say this to Russia, this to the Saudis. They're going to now demand every transcript ever of every conversation our president has as commander in chief with the foreign leader. All right. Well, let's play this game. I would like the release of every Biden Ukraine phone call transcript. And by the way, where we're at it, I would like every Obama, Iran, Mullah, Rouhani transcript. I'd like the Obama Putin transcripts. What is the flexibility that he showed after his reelection? You get the point. It's all a fishing expedition. You know, first we have to pass health care to see what's in it. Well, impeach Donald Trump and then manufacture a reason later. We'll have more on this in a moment. But first, we do start with the rampant dishonesty in the Democratic Party and their close friends, allies tied at the hip, the media mob. Tonight, it's almost like the invasion of the body snatchers. Remember that movie? They look like us, but they don't think like anything that we recognize, devoid of any real perception. I don't even know at this point if the left knows or can see their own hypocrisy that is glaring. I don't know if it's just raw, unadulterated, sewer, uh, swamp politics that drives them or a quest to regain power. That's certainly a part of it or their blind psychotic rage against the president. But what I do know is that liberals are constantly, we know they already look down on we conservatives, the people. You see it when they call us smelly Walmart people. Guilty, irredeemable, deplorable, that like Donald Trump, or as Obama once said, you know, those angry Americans that cling to their God, I cling, guns, Second Amendment, Bibles, and religion. Yeah, I, we all need God in our lives. Or New York Governor Cuomo revealing those conservatives that are pro-life and pro-Second Amendment, they're not New Yorkers. Remember he said that. And nobody needs 10 bullets to kill a deer. Okay, he doesn't believe in the Second Amendment either. And once during his embarrassing five-minute audition to be a radio host, remember, an emotional Alec Baldwin got angry that me and the great one, Mark Levin, called in and tag-team him, and he called me a, a ignorant former construction work hack from Long Island. Guilty of that, too. I am very proud of my two decades long blue collar, hardworking history. Yeah, my mom was a prison guard who worked 16 hour shifts for 25 years. Now, the point is, these people have so much disdain for honest, hardworking Americans with just a different political opinion. Okay, I like to shop at Walmart, Costco, Target, you name it. Yeah, those are the people that make America great again. And then we pay these jackasses in Washington salaries and pay for their health care plans, remember, that are better than the Obamacare exchanges we're stuck with by a long shot. And these Democrats have now lost all perspective. For example, let's look at creepy Uncle Joe's Ukrainian scandal. Let's play a game tonight. Here's the game. Let's replace the name VP Joe Biden and we'll say VP Donald Trump. I know he won't like the, well, the reduction in title, but just play along. 
and replace the name of Hunter Biden. We'll call Hunter Biden Don Jr. What do you think would happen is the name of the game? What if Don Jr. were taking millions of dollars from what is a shady Ukrainian oil giant, billions of dollars from China, while his father was vice president? And let's say it's Don Jr. who had zero experience with either country or any of the businesses, energy, oil, glass, uh, gas, private equity, that were paying him these huge amounts of money. What if Vice President Donald Trump leveraged a billion U.S. tax dollars to get a Ukrainian prosecutor fired who was investigating Donald Jr.'s company? What do you think the media mob would be calling this? You think you'd say it's a conspiracy theory or a hoax? You think, or do you think there'd be endless, breathless, hysterical reporting for weeks on end? What if Politico reported that an RNC operative and contractor was working hand in hand with the Ukrainian government, digging up dirt on Hillary Clinton for the 2016 election, and they were successful? What if that same article read Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Hillary backfire? What would the media mob re react reaction be to that report? What about the Grassley and Senator Johnson letter about the, quote, brazen efforts by the DNC to use the government of Ukraine for the express purpose of finding negative information on Hillary Clinton? What if the letter was about the RNC? And what about Hillary Clinton's dirty Russian dossier? What if it was Donald Trump who funneled money through a law firm, campaign finance violation, to uh, then hire an op research group, Fusion GPS, to hire an ex-foreign spy to dig up Russian dirt on Hillary Clinton, probably, knowingly, from the beginning, Russian misinformation and disinformation. Oh, come to think of it, Donald Trump had a server, private server, legally had top secret classified material on it. And what if Donald Trump deleted 33,000 emails that were subpoenaed? and then destroyed his cell phones, and then bleach bit the hard drive. You think the media mob would care? Now, I say all this because it's not funny, because this is how sick, frankly, is cancerous what this mob in the media is doing to this country every day. This also applies to the current Ukrainian witch hunt against President Trump. And as you know, Democrats and the mob and the media, they're giving, of course, the white glove treatment to the fake whistleblower. who's not a whistleblower. It's not firsthand information. It's hearsay from the intel community. Then you got the guy running it, the cowardly Adam Shifty Schiff in his office, even giving this fake whistleblower advice on how to prepare the critical complaint and get the, given the advice to get a lawyer. And the media mobs praise this person over and over again. But thank goodness we have videotape. I was actually on the air during the Clinton impeachment. I know, I've now started my 24th year at Fox. Long time. But in the 90s, when a woman named Linda Tripp, remember, she was a whistleblower against then-President Bill Clinton. Well, the media mob, well, treated this whistleblower a lot differently. And I think it's worth taking a trip down memory lane. Take a look. Friendship means different things to different people, but few people expect to have their friendship betrayed by having their private conversations taped, as Linda Tripp did to Monica Lewinsky. I cannot believe that someone who professes to be a friend could go about scheming the way that she did and, and absolutely defying and, and, and violating Monica the way that she did. Co-workers often viewed her as an inveterate busybody. That Has she always been a, a snoop and a gossip with a particular interest in other people's romantic lives? Um, she is somebody who's had a pattern of interest in other people's marital lives. The story of Linda Tripp's betrayal is really very unappealing and she comes off as a conniving and really not a likable person. Conniving, not like a oh, person. Imagine the media mob treating the current so-called non-whistleblower whistleblower like that. But also breaking tonight, we are learning that this non-whistleblower whistleblower who followed a complaint on President Trump's phone call with Ukraine. Oh, yeah, registered Trump Democrat, just like apparently the lawyer she hired. And we also know that he or she have no direct knowledge of the phone call. Zero, nothing. And the complaint was entirely based on hearsay, which would not be admissible in a court of law. Just the fact, and media reports. And by the way, that the office of the shifty, the cowardly shift, well, spoke directly with this person, encouraged that person to get a lawyer, and filed a, filed a report with the inspector general. But that didn't stop the cowardly Adam Schiff from going to on MSDNC. That would be Area 51, mm -hmm. Roswell, Rachel Maddow's conspiracy channel, and the DNC network, 
this September, again lying through his teeth. He said, quote, we have not spoken directly with the whistleblower. It's hardly the first time, by the way, Schiff has been caught in a lie. He's the biggest liar in Congress. He once said he had direct evidence. He said it numerous times. Direct evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. That the evidence of collusion was in plain sight. We're still looking for it. Cowardly Schiff, come on the program. Bring it with you. And more recently in a committee hearing, well, he performed a dramatic reading because he didn't get what he wanted in the transcript of the phone call with the president, the Ukrainian president Zelensky. Anyway, from that transcript, he had to completely fabricate it because it wasn't what he wanted it to be. So he just made it up, called it a parody later. Someone might want to tell Speaker Pelosi also that her partner in crime is a serial liar because she seems totally unaware of his lies. Take a look. I know you support Chairman Schiff, but was it right for him to have that dramatic interpretation of the president's uh, transcript of the phone call at the hearing last week? I want the American people to know what that phone call was about. I want them to hear it. So, yeah, it's fair. It's sad. But it's, it's using the president's own words. So if he's... If well, those he, weren't the president's words. It was an interpretation of the president's words. They're saying he made this up. He did not make it up. Whoopsie daisy, one of Pelosi's brilliant staffers might want to help her get on a computer so she can see what the cowardly Adam Shifty Schiff is up to. And by the way, you might want to tell her a mile from her house is a big, huge drug problem where people are defecating and urinating in the streets, not in her exact neighborhood, but one mile away. Pelosi also needs to answer some important questions about her fraudulent impeachment inquiry. In a letter to the Speaker, Minority Leader McCarthy is demanding, rightfully so, answers to the following procedures required in any official impeachment process. Quote, do you intend to grant co-equal subpoena power to both the chair and the ranking member at the committee level? Do you intend to require that all subpoenas be subject to a vote of the full committee at the request of either the chair or the ranking member? Do you intend to provide the president's counsel the right to attend all hearings and depositions? Do you intend to provide the president's counsel the right to present evidence? Do you intend to provide the president's counsel the right to object to the admittance of evidence? And do you intend to provide the president's counsel the right to recommend a witness list? And finally, do you intend to refer all findings on impeachment to Chairman Nadler on the Judiciary Committee as prescribed in Rule 10, I assume, of the rules of the House? Or is Chairman Schiff in charge of leading this inquiry, as has been reported in the press? The aforementioned questions are standard operating procedures for any impeachment proceeding. Anything less is a sham. By the way, three times we've had impeachment, yeah, the House would usually vote on the inquiry. She's not wanting that to happen, because if they do, all those things Kevin McCarthy is asking for would in fact follow. Now, tomorrow the White House will send a similar letter. Daring Pelosi to get serious about her witch hunt. Let's put them all on the record. I say call the roll. So time will tell. Is the speaker in name only serious about impeachment or is this a big, huge political stunt that's just out to hurt the country and divide the country further? Whatever are true intentions, Pelosi's impeachment charade is getting off to a horrific start. How do we know? Because breaking tonight, and we'll have firsthand, well, information coming up. The very first star witness in the proceeding, the U.S. special envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, reportedly, I, and I heard from people in the room, devastated and destroyed the Democrats' Ukrainian conspiracy theories, all of them. By the way, to Mr. Volker, congratulations. I hear big day coming up. And this comes on the heels of another major disappointment for Democrats. This week, far-left members of Congress were absolutely giddy with anticipation over an urgent State Department briefing about Ukraine. Yeah, it turned out the State Department's nonpartisan inspector general presented them with evidence of DNC collusion with Ukraine and a timeline of Biden's shakedown of the Ukrainian prosecutor. And Democrats and the media mob, well, are the evidence a disproven conspiracy theory? Because it's blowing up right in your face and you're helping Donald Trump in the process. Because we have a devastating timeline. This was put together by former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who was on last night. This paints a much different picture. Keep in mind this time frame, Giuliani began his investigation into Biden and Ukraine well before Biden ever announced his intention to run for president in 2018. As President Trump's attorney, the conducting, he was conducting important research. Why? Because he was still defending his client, the president, from the lying spurious allegations against Robert Mueller and his witch hunt. 
And for all the willfully ignorant members of the mob who are shielding Joe Biden tonight, you may want to pay close attention to this timeline. I'll try and read it slowly to you. It starts in 2010. Mykola Zolachevsky, the oligarch and the pro-Russian Ukrainian government of Viktor Yankovich, started granting his company valuable gas exploration permits. The core company, that's called Burisma Holdings. Let's flash uh, forward to February of 2014. President Obama names Vice President Sleepy Creepy Uncle Joe as the point man for Ukraine. In the same month, President Yankovich is ousted. And Yankovich and Zolov Chesky and the oligarch behind the uh, Burisma Holdings issue, they flee to Russia. And in April of 2014, Zolov Chesky places Hunter Biden and Devin Archer and his partner and former aide to then Secretary of State John Kerry on the board of Burisma. Neither person had any experience that we can find in oil, gas, energy, none of them any experience we can find on Ukraine. But they were paid millions of dollars for their expertise in what? I don't know. Expertise in knowing Joe Biden, I guess. In August of 2014, Ukraine's prosecutor, this is General Viktor Shokin, he opened a criminal investigation into Burisma Holdings. That is a fact. And Hunter Biden and Devin Archer identified as persons of interest in the investigation. By the way, people under investigation are notified. In January of 2015, Burisma's Zolov Chesky is named a fugitive by Ukraine's government. Hunter Biden remains on board Burisma Holdings. In May of 2015, Hunter Biden meets with the Deputy Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, regarding concerns about Burisma Holdings. In October of 2015, Hillary Clinton allegedly tells Vice President Biden she will not go after Hunter Biden if he runs, but can't control what her staff will do, meaning I'll leak it. In December 2015, VP Biden tells the president of Ukraine that he must dismiss the prosecutor general, Viktor Shokin. It's after the New York Times gave him a heads up, his son's being investigated. And in February 2016, that's Vice President Biden and Ukrainian president talking on the phone about removing the prosecutor general. I'd love, by the way, can we please release this transcript? Who's investigating his son? And then in March of 2016, Biden, then vice president, issues his now infamous quid pro quo. In other words, the shakedown that he was going to withhold a billion of your hard-earned tax dollars and loan guarantees unless that prosecutor, General Shokin, is fired. A few days later, Shokin was fired, and Biden bragged about it. And in May, a new prosecutor general is hired. That very same spring, the new prosecutor meets with the American ambassador. She allegedly tells him to drop several investigations. And meanwhile, in June, the Ukrainian law enforcement agency announces it has uncovered a massive fraud scheme involving, that's right, Hunter Biden's partner, Burisma Holdings. That same month, Biden meets with the Ukrainian prime minister. A few months later, in November, Ukraine announced that the case surrounding Burisma's Closed. It's just like that. Democrats and the media mob, they say, oh, there's no evidence. There's no evidence. It's a conspiracy theory. Really? No evidence? Why was Hunter Biden on the board of Burisma? What was his qualifications? Certainly wasn't his expertise in the energy sector or the country of Ukraine. And clearly Biden knows about his son's lucrative business deals in spite of his public comments. And by the way, here he's pictured on a gold course. Oh, that's in the summer of 2014. It might be Sabonic, somebody speculated. And fellow Burisma board member Devin Archer. Believe it or not, Hunter had an even more lucrative deal with the Bank of China. From Russia to Ukraine, the left has been smearing President Trump with one lie, one besmirchment, one conspiracy theory, one hoax after another. But tonight, their sick, twisted scheming is about to boomerang and blow up again, just like Russia, Russia, right in their face. And by the way, creepy, sleepy Joe 30330, he's in serious trouble tonight, and so is his son. The U.S. government is not his family piggy bank, in spite of what he arrogantly thought.